Chapters 8 through 14 of the Book of Leviticus from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Leviticus, Chapters 8 through 14. Chapter 8 The Ever Living also spoke to Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, with the robes and the oil of consecration, and the bull for a sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of biscuits, and the whole of the chiefs of the parliament to the door of the hall of assembly. Moses consequently did as the ever-living commanded him, and summoned the chiefs to the door of the hall of assembly. Then Moses said to the chiefs, The ever-living commands this to be done. Then Moses took Aaron and his sons, and washed them in water, and put the vests upon them, and girt them with the girdle, and clothed them with the mantle, and put the ephod on him, and girt him with the embroidered belt of the ephod, and ephoded him with it. Then he put on the breastplate of the Urim and Thummim, and put the turban upon his head, and fastened upon the turban at the front of it the golden flower consecrated to holiness, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. Moses next took the oil of consecration, and consecrated the tabernacle and all that was in it, and sanctified them, and sprinkled with it seven times on the altar, and consecrated the altar and all its instruments, and the bath and all its cans to sanctify them, and poured the oil of consecration on the head of Aaron, and consecrated him to sanctify him. Then Moses brought forward the sons of Aaron, and dressed them with vests, and girt them with girdles, and bound upon them the mitres, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. Next he brought up the bull for a sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bull for a sin offering. Then he slew it, and Moses took some of the blood, and put it around the horns of the altar with his forefinger, to purify the altar from sin and he poured out the rest of the blood at the side of the altar, and sanctified it with an expiation for it. He also took the fat which is on the chest, and the other fat of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat upon them, which Moses burnt upon the altar. But the bull and its skin, and its flesh, and its dung he burnt with fire, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. Then he took the ram for the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Then Moses slew it, and sprinkled some of the blood on the altar around, and divided the ram into parts. Moses then burnt the pieces of the head and its fat. But the chest and the feet Moses washed in water, and burnt the whole of the ram upon the altar, as a whole burnt offering. It was a pleasant breath given to the ever-living, as the ever-living commanded Moses. Then he took the ram, the second ram, of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Moses afterwards slew it, and took some of its blood, and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear, and on his right thumb, and on his right great toe. Moses also sprinkled the blood upon the altar around. Next Moses took the sons of Aaron, and put some of the blood on the tips of their right ears, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the great toes of their right feet. Moses afterwards sprinkled some of the blood around the altar. He also took the fat, and the tail, and the whole of the fat that is on the chest, and the rest of the fat, and the two kidneys with their fat, and the right leg, and some from the basket of biscuits which was before the ever-living. He took one biscuit, and one oil-bread cake, and one wafer, and placed them with the fats upon the right leg, and put the whole into the hands of Aaron and the hands of his sons, and they waved them before the presence of the ever-living. Then Moses took them from their hands, and offered them as a whole burnt offering on the altar, as an appointment of them. It was an offering of pleasing flavor to the ever-living. Moses then took the breast of the ram of consecration, and waved it before the ever-living. It was as a portion for Moses, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. Moses afterwards took some of the oil of consecration, and some of the blood from the altar, and sprinkled upon Aaron, upon his sons, and upon his robes, and upon the robes of his sons with him, and sanctified Aaron and his robes, and his sons, and the robes of his sons with him. Moses also said to Aaron and his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the hall of assembly, and sit to eat it, with the bread that is upon the basket of consecration, as I have been commanded to instruct Aaron and his sons that they should eat. But what is left of the flesh and bread, burn with fire. You shall, however, not quit the hall of assembly for seven days, until the days are fulfilled, the days of your consecration, 
for seven days will complete their number what has been done to-day the ever-living commanded to be done to expiate for you you shall remain at the door of the hall of assembly day and night for seven days and guard the trust of the ever-living and not remove for so i have been commanded aaron and his sons consequently did all the things that the ever-living commanded by the hand of moses chapter nine but when the eighth day came moses summoned aaron and his sons and the judges of israel and said to aaron and his sons select for yourselves a perfect heifer from the fold for a sin offering and approach to the presence of the ever-living then he addressed the children of israel saying you must take a ram from the goats for a sin offering and a lamb and bullock of a year old both perfect for a burnt offering with a bull and a ram for a thank offering to sacrifice before the ever-living and a food offering mixed with oil for to-day the ever-living will appear to you they consequently brought what moses ordered to the front of the hall of assembly and all the chiefs approached and stood before the ever-living then moses said this is the thing that the ever-living commanded you to do now the majesty of the ever-living will appear to you moses next said to aaron advance to the altar and offer the sin offering and the burnt offering for yourself and expiate first on account of yourself afterwards on account of the people and make a gift for the people and expiate on account of them as the ever-living has commanded aaron consequently advanced to the altar and slew the calf that was for his sin offering the sons of aaron also advanced to the blood of it and dipped their forefingers into the blood of it and placed upon the horns of the altar and poured the rest of the blood at the side of the altar but the fat and the kidneys and the rest from the breast of the sin offering he burnt on the altar as the ever-living commanded to moses but the flesh and the skin and dung he consumed in fire outside the camp then he slew the burnt offering and the sons of aaron took some of its blood and poured it upon the altar around then he took the whole burnt offering to him to divide it and burnt its head upon the altar afterwards he washed the chest and the feet and burnt them as a burnt offering on the altar then he offered the gift for the people and took the goat for the sin of the people and made a sin offering like the former sin offering next he presented the burnt offering and did as with the offering for righteousness afterwards he presented the food offering and filled his hand from it and burnt it upon the altar besides the burnt offering of the morning then he slew the bull and the ram as a sacrifice of thanks from the people and the sons of aaron brought some of the blood and sprinkled it around upon the altar with the fats from the bull and the fat from the tail of the ram the caul and the kidneys and the rest of the breast and they piled up the fats upon the chest and burnt the fats upon the altar but the breast and the right leg aaron waved before the ever-living as the ever-living commanded moses then aaron raised his hands and blessed the people and came down from making the sin offering and the burnt offering and the thank offering moses and aaron next entered the hall of assembly and went and blessed the people when the splendor of the ever-living appeared to all the people the fire came from the presence of the ever-living and consumed the burnt offering on the altar and the fats when all the people saw it they cheered and fell upon their faces chapter ten but the sons of aaron nadab and abihu each took a fire-pan and placed on them fire and put incense upon it and presented strange fire before the ever-living which they were not commanded therefore fire came out from the presence of the lord and consumed them and they died before the lord consequently moses said to aaron what was it that the ever-living spoke saying in approaching me i will be sanctified and respected before all the people and aaron was silent then moses called to mishal and to altzaphan sons of Azael, the uncle of aaron and said to them approach and take up those from the presence of the sanctuary to the outside of the camp so they approached and carried them in their vestments to the outside of the camp as moses had ordered then moses said to aaron and to aleazar and to ithamar his sons you shall not uncover your heads and you shall not strip off your robes lest you should die and anger come upon all the congregation but your relatives of all the house of israel shall weep for the burning that the ever-living has burnt you shall also not come out of the hall of assembly lest you should die 
for the oil of consecration to the ever-living is upon you. So they did as Moses ordered. Then Moses spoke to Aaron and commanded, You or your sons with you shall not drink of wine or an intoxicant when you are going to the hall of assembly, so that you may not die. This is an everlasting institution for your posterity, for you shall distinguish between the sacred and the common, and between sin and purity, so that you may teach the sons of Israel all the institutions which the ever-living dictated to them by means of Moses. Moses also spoke to Aaron, and Eleazar, and Ethamar his sons. Take again another food offering for a present to the ever-living, and eat it with biscuits at the side of the altar, for it is holy of holies, therefore you shall eat it in the holy place for it is a portion to you, and a portion to your sons from the presence to the ever-living, for so I have been commanded. But you may eat the waved breast and the raised leg in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you, for they are given from my altar as a portion to you and to your children, as thank-offerings from the children of Israel. The raised leg and the waved breast, with the presence of the fats which they bring to be waved, you shall wave before the ever-living, and they shall be for you and your children for a perpetual portion, as the ever-living has commanded. But when Moses inquired for the goat for the sin offering, he found it had been burnt. Therefore he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, again, and said, Why have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? for it is holy of holies, and it was given to you to bear the frailty of the congregation, to expiate for them before the ever-living. Look, its blood was not brought into the sanctuary. You ought to have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. Then Aaron spoke to Moses, On the day they presented their sin offering and their burnt offering before the ever-living, you instructed me about it, and I ate the sin offering that day. Let that compensate in the eyes of my Lord. So Moses listened, and it compensated in his eyes. Chapter 11 Then the ever-living spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel to command. These are what you may eat of all the animals that are upon the earth. All that have hoofs and divide the hoofs and chew the cud, you may eat those beasts but you shall not eat those that chew the cud and do not divide the hoof. The camel, for it chews the cud, but has not divided the hoof, it is unclean to you. And the jerboa, for it chews the cud, but has not a divided hoof, it is unclean to you. And the leaper, for it chews the cud, but has not a divided hoof, it is unclean to you. And the swine, although it has hoofs and divides the hoof, but it does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. You may eat of all these that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales, in the waters and the seas and the rivers, you may eat them. But all that have not fins and scales on them in the waters and rivers, of all the swarms of the waters, and of every form of life that is in the waters, they must be loathsome to you, and their flesh shall be loathsome to you. You shall not eat of their carcasses, you shall loathe them. All in the waters that have not fins and scales shall be loathsome to you. And these shall be loathsome to you among birds. You shall not eat them, they are loathsome. The eagle, and the osprey, and the fishhawk, the kite, and the vulture species, and all the raven species, and the ostrich, and the goat sucker, and seagull, and the buzzard species, and the pelican, and the gannet, and the owl, and the crested owl, and the turkey buzzard, and the carrion eagle, and the stork, and snorter species, and hoopoo, and the bat, and every winged reptile that crawls shall be loathsome to you. However you may eat of these, of all the swarms of wing that crawl, that have knees above their feet to leap upon the earth, you may eat these from among them. The locust kind, and the cockchafer kind, and the grasshopper kind, but all the winged breed that crawls on its feet shall be loathsome to you, and they defile. All who touch their dead bodies are unclean until the evening, and any one who carries their carcasses shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Besides every beast that has hoofs, but does not divide its hoofs, and does not chew the cud, they are unclean to you. All who touch them are unclean. 
and everything that walks upon its paws, every insect that goes on all fours, they are unclean to you. Every one who touches their dead bodies is unclean, and whoever carries their dead bodies shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. These also are unclean to you of the species breeding upon the earth, the mole and the mouse and the lizard species, the groaner and the panter and the shrew and the ignanodon and the chameleon. These are unclean to you in all their breeds. All touching them when dead shall be unclean until the evening, and all who eat of them when dead are unclean. And all upon which any of them may fall, and any vessel of wood or clothing or skin or a sack, any article that is made use of, shall be put into water, and be unclean until the evening, then pure. And any vessel of earthenware that they fall into, all that they fall into is unclean, and it shall be broken, and all food that they have gnawed, or their water falls upon, is unclean, and any cup from which they drink of all vessels is unclean. And anything upon which their dead bodies may fall is unclean, pan or tub, it shall be broken, they are unclean and shall be unclean to you, except a spring or well or reservoir of water, they shall be pure, but all touching their dead bodies are unclean. But if their dead bodies fall upon any grain to be used for seed that is to be sown, it is pure. Also, if you have put water upon the seed after their dead bodies fall upon it, it is clean to you. And when any of the cattle that you possess for food dies, whoever touches its carcass is unclean until evening, and whoever eats from its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening, and whoever carries the carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. All vermin also of the vermin on the earth shall be loathsome, it shall not be eaten. Everything going upon its belly, and everything going by crawling upon many feet, of all the vermin of the vermin of the earth, you shall not eat, for they are loathsome. You shall not make yourselves loathsome with the bodies of any of the spawn of the vermin, and you shall not devile yourselves with them, nor be defiled by them. For I am your ever-living God, who sanctifies you, and you shall be healthy, for I am holy, and you shall not defile yourselves or your lives by any of the vermin that crawls upon the earth. For the ever-living brought you up from the land of Mitzer to be a God to you, so you must be healthy, for I am holy. These are the laws about cattle and birds, and every animal life that crawls in the waters, and every animal life that spawns upon the land, with the difference between the unclean and the pure, and between the animals for food and the animals that are not for food. Chapter 12 The ever-living also spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, commanding, a woman who is delivered and bears a boy is unclean for seven days, as though she were unclean with the uncleanness of menstruation, and at the eighth day his foreflesh shall be circumcised, but for a period of thirty-three days she shall be secluded for her purification. She shall not approach anything sacred, and shall not come to the sacred place until the days of her purification are completed. But if she bears a girl, then she shall be separated as unclean for twice seven, as in menstruation. And for a period of sixty-six days she shall be secluded for purification from her blood. But upon the completion of the days of her purification for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a she-lamb of one year for a burnt offering, and a young dove or a turtle-dove as a sin offering to the door of the hall of assembly to the priest, and he shall present them before the ever-living, and expiate for her, and purify her for the flow of her blood. These are the laws about the childbirth of a boy or girl. But if she does not possess a she-lamb, then she shall take two turtle-doves, or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering, and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall expiate for her, and she shall be pure. Chapter 13 the ever-living also spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his flesh a swelling or scab or scurf, and there is on the skin of his flesh an irritation, he shall go to Aaron the priest, or to one of the medical priests, and shall show the priest the spot on the skin of his body, and the hair in the spot turned white. Should the spot appear hollow under the skin of his body, it may be a contagion, and the priest shall diagnose it, for it is a disease. 
but if a white scurf is upon the skin of his body which does not appear to be below the skin and the hair is not changed to white then the priest shall isolate the patient for seven days and upon the seventh day the priest shall examine the patient and if the mark appears to him to stand still without the spot spreading the priest shall isolate him for a second seven days but the priest shall examine him on the seventh day the second time and if the mark is mitigated and the spot has not spread on the skin then the priest shall cleanse off the scurf from it and he shall wash his clothes and be clean but if the eruption spreads and with scabs on the skin after he has shown himself to the priest to be pronounced clean then he shall show himself again to the priest and the priest shall examine him and if the eruption has spread on his skin the priest shall declare him diseased with a contagion when a man has been attacked by a contagion he shall go to a priest and the priest shall examine him and if he sees a white swelling in his skin and if the hair has turned white and corrupting flesh lives in the swelling it is chronic leprosy on the skin of his body and he is unclean the priest shall not isolate him but he is unclean but if the disease spreads on the skin and the irritation covers the whole of his skin with an attack from his head to his feet he shall show all to the eye of the priest and the priest shall examine it and if the irritation covers the whole of his body and the eruption is bright all of it turned white he is clean but if at any time raw flesh appears he is contagious therefore he shall show the raw flesh to the priest and be declared contagious the raw flesh is a contagion it is contagious but if the raw flesh ceases and turns white he shall also go to the priest and the priest shall examine it and if the eruption has turned white and bright the priest shall declare him free from contagiousness when there is on the body a burning ulcer to be cured and there may be on the inflamed part a white swelling or a white reddish scurf it shall be shown to the priest and the priest shall examine it and if he sees a sinking of the skin and the hair turning white the priest shall declare him unclean with a contagion of spreading inflammation but if when the priest examines him there is no white hair and there is no sinking in the skin but there is degeneration then the priest shall isolate him for seven days and if it spreads in the skin then the priest shall declare him diseased by a contagious attack but if afterwards the inflammation abating the irritation ceases to burn in the ulcers the priest shall declare him clean when there is in the flesh an acute inflammation and there is rawness on the inflammation with white scurf and red and white pimples when the priest examines him and observes the hair to be turning white on the scurf and he observes pitting in the skin it is an attack of inflammatory ulceration and the priest shall pronounce him diseased it is a contagious disease but if on examining it the priest does not perceive white hair on the inflammation nor a pitting in the skin but it is fiery then the priest shall isolate him for seven days but when the priest shall re-examine him on the seventh day if it is spreading over the skin the priest shall declare him unclean it is a contagious disease but if afterwards the inflammation abates and does not spread on the skin but the inflammation of the swelling is relaxed then the priest shall pronounce him clean for it is only an attack of inflammation and when a man or woman may have spots on the head or chin the priest shall examine the spot and if he sees on examining it a sinking in the skin and with it a small yellow hair then they are unclean until the priest has extirpated it it is a disease of the head or chin but when the priest examines if the attack is extirpated and discovers after examination that there is no depression on the skin and strong black hair on it then the priest shall isolate the patient he has cured seven days but the priest shall examine the patient on the seventh day and if it has not spread during the seclusion and there is not on him a yellow hair and he observes not upon the isolated person a depression in the skin the priest shall cause the patient to be shaved and the priest shall isolate the patient for a second seven days but the priest shall examine the patient on the seventh day and if it has not spread upon the patient's skin and he observes that there is not a pitting of the skin then the priest shall pronounce him clean and he shall wash his clothes and be clean but if it spreads upon the patient's skin after he has been pronounced clean the priest shall re-examine him and if he observes a spreading on the skin of the patient the priest need not examine for the yellow hair he is unclean 
but if when the patient stands for reinspection and black hair has sprung up on him the patient is cured the priest shall pronounce him clean and if a man or woman has in the skin of their body a bright shining with whiteness then the priest shall examine and if he observes in the skin of their body a bright shining with whiteness it is an eruption flowering in the skin it is clean and if a person is sprinkled with baldness on his head he is clean and if at the front of his face his head is sprinkled it is for baldness he is clean but if there should be upon his bald head or forehead a whitish red outbreak it is an ulcerous attack whether on the crown or the forehead so the priest shall examine it and if he observes a rising white reddish eruption upon the crown or the forehead when he examines the scurf on the skin of the body the man is diseased he is unclean the priest shall declare him unclean by a disease of the head but the attack is constitutional his clothes shall be torn and his head shall be uncovered and he shall not curl his beard but shall cry unclean unclean all the time he is suffering it he is unclean he must be isolated outside the camp must be made to remain outside the clothing also that may be upon him is infected by the disease whether woolen clothing or cotton clothing whether warped and wefted with wool or cotton or of skin or of any preparation of skin and if there is a greenish or reddish stain on the clothing or skin whether of warp or weft or any article of skin is marked by the discharge it shall be examined by the priest the priest who examines the patient shall then isolate the sufferer for seven days but shall re-examine the patient on the seventh day when if the infection has discharged upon the clothing whether in warp or weft or on the skin of any article made of skin for use it is an attack of itch it is unclean consequently he shall burn that clothing whether warped and weft whether of wool or cotton or of any article of skin in which the infection may be for it is infected with itch it must be burnt in fire but if when the priest examines it he observes that the infection has not spread in the fabric of warp and weft or in the leather or any article of leather then the priest shall order them to wash whatever has the infection upon it and isolate them for a second seven days but the priest shall examine the infected articles after the washing and if he observes that the infection has not disappeared from sight and the stain has not gone it is unclean they shall consume it in fire it is corroded by vermin or microbes but even if when the priest examines and observes a mitigation of the attack after the washing of it yet there is a wearing away from the garment or from the skin or from the warp or from the weft and he perceives that the garment of warp and weft or any article of leather is still fretted they shall burn in fire everything in which the infection remains but the clothing of warp and weft or any article of leather which has been washed and the infection has departed from them shall be washed a second time and be clean these are the laws respecting infection in clothing of wool or cotton of warp and weft or any article of skin as to cleanness or uncleanness chapter fourteen the ever-living also spoke to moses saying these are the laws about sufferers from infectious diseases at the time they are cured and submitted to the priest the priest shall go to the outside of the camp and the priest shall examine and look at the patient recovered from infection then the priest shall prepare and take for purification two clean living birds and cedar wood and scarlet wool and hyssop and the priest shall prepare and slay the first bird into a vessel full of living water then take the living bird to him and the cedar wood and the scarlet wool and the hyssop and sprinkle them and the living bird in the blood of the slain bird and the living water and also upon the man cleansed from the infection seven times and declare him clean and send the living bird out into the open field afterwards the cleansed man shall wash his clothes and shave his head and bathe in water and be clean and after that go into the camp he shall however keep out of his tent for seven days but on the seventh day he shall shave the whole of his head both the head and his beard and his eyebrows he shall also shave the whole of his hair and bathe his clothes and bathe his body in water and be clean 
upon the eighth day he shall also take two perfect he lambs and a perfect ewe lamb of one year and three tenths of flour mixed with oil as a food offering and one log of oil and the priest shall station the cleansed man or the cleansed woman before the presence of the ever-living at the door of the hall of assembly then the priest shall take one of the he lambs and present it as a trespass offering with the log of oil and wave them before the ever living and slay the lamb in the place where they slay the sin offering and the burnt offerings in the holy place for as a sin offering the trespass offering shall be holy of holies to the priest the priest shall also take some of the blood of the trespass offering and place upon the tip of the right ear of the recovered man and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot then let the priest take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of the priest's left hand and dip the right hand of the priest in the oil that is in his left hand palm and sprinkle the oil seven times with his finger before the ever living and from the rest of the oil that is in his palm the priest shall put some upon the tip of the right ear of the restored person and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot with some of the blood of the trespass offering and the rest of the oil that is in the palm of the priest he shall put upon the head of the recovered person thus shall the priest expiate for him before the ever-living the priest shall also make a sin offering and expiate for the recovered man for his sins and slay a burnt offering for him thus the priest shall offer up the burnt offering and the food offering on the altar and expiate for him the priest shall afterwards declare him clean but if he is poor and has no property, then he shall take a single he lamb for a trespass offering to wave, to expiate for himself, and a tenth of flour mixed with oil for a food offering, and a log of oil, or two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, whichever he may possess, and one shall be for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. He shall bring them upon the eighth day after his recovery to the priest at the door of the hall of assembly to present to the ever living. Then the priest shall take the lamb for a trespass offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them before the ever living and slay the lamb for a trespass offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it upon the tip of the right ear of the recovered person, and upon the thumb of the right hand, and upon the great toe of the right foot the priest shall also pour some of the oil into the priest's left hand palm and the priest shall sprinkle with his right forefinger some of the oil which is in his left palm seven times before the ever living then the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his left palm upon the tip of the right ear of the recovered person and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot on the place for the blood of the trespass offering but the rest of the oil that is in the palm of the priest he shall put upon the head of the recovered person to expiate for him before the ever living or he shall take one of the turtle doves or young pigeons which he possesses which he holds in his hand the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering with the food offering thus the priest shall expiate for the recovered person before the ever living these are the laws about those attacked by contagious disease who do not possess enough for the regular purification the ever-living also spoke to moses and to aaron to command when you arrive in the land of canaan which i shall give to you to possess and find a contagious disease in a house in the land you possess then the owner of the house shall go to the priest and inform him saying that a contagious disease has appeared in his house and demand that the priest should visit the house the priest shall at once go and inquire the nature of the disease and declare all in the house unclean then after that the priest shall go to examine the house itself and inquire into the disease and if he finds the infection in the walls of the house the drains having a greenish yellow or purplish rotting and there appears decay in their walls then the priest shall remove the family from the neighborhood of the house and isolate the house for seven days but the priest shall revisit it on the seventh day and examine it again and if the infection has spread in the drains of the house the priest shall command and they shall pull away the stones in which the infection is and remove them to the outside of the town to the receptacle for refuse and the house shall be cut off from the houses surrounding it and they shall pour out the rubbish caused by the cutting it off at the outside of the town into the receptacle for refuse 
then they shall take other stones in the place of these stones and take other mortar and repair the house but if the infection returns and spreads in the family after the removal of the stones and after the destruction of the stones and after the cutting off of the house and after its repairing then the priest shall come and examine it and if he observes the infection spreading in the house it is a virulent contagion the house itself is unclean therefore he shall break down the house with its stones and its timber and all the mortar of the house and carry it outside the town to the refuse heap and whoever enters that house all the time that it is isolated shall be unclean until the evening whoever rests in that house shall wash his clothes and whoever eats in that house shall wash his clothing but if the priest upon coming to examine observes that the infection is not spreading in that house after the house has been repaired then the priest shall pronounce the house clean for it is cured of the infection then he shall take as a sin offering for the house two he-goats and cedar wood and scarlet wool and hyssop and slay one of the goats into an earthen bowl filled with living water then prepare the cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet wool and the living goat and dabble them with some blood of the slain goat and with the living water and sprinkle the house seven times and expiate for the house by the blood of the goat and by living water and by the living goat and by the cedar wood and scarlet wool afterwards he shall turn the living goat outside the village on the face of the field and expiate for the house and declare it clean these are the laws about any infectious disease and its removal and for infected fabrics or houses and for ulcerations and running sores and for scrofula with eruptions from the day of contagion until the day of their cure these are the laws of infection the end of chapters eight through fourteen of the book of leviticus recording by mark penfold